When playing fighting games, you'll eventually run into a situation where you don't have an immediate answer to a problem. It might be a poke in neutral that you have trouble countering, a mix-up you can't block, or a block string where you have no idea where the gap is. And when this happens, your best bet is to go into training mode and try to find answers. Let's use a basic Eno mix-up from Guilty Gear Strive as an example. Once Eno gets a knockdown, she can do a high-low mix-up on Okuzeme. Let's say in match, you've been trying to get out of this mix-up with invisible reversals, but the opponent has been consistently blocking them. So you go into training mode and realize that the high attack can be safe jumped. For people who do not know, safe jumps are attacks that hit the opponent under normal circumstances, but recover fast enough to block if the opponent does an invisible reversal. Check out our dedicated video for more details. Anyways, you come to the realization that throwing out reversals in the hopes of only hitting MP lows is not a risk you want to constantly take. So instead of guessing which way to block, you consult another video on this channel and learn about fuzzy blocking, a defensive option select that allows you to block both high and low attacks with a single set of inputs. So no need to guess. I'm not going to go into too much detail since the video covers it, but the basic premise is to block high first, then immediately block low to cover both options. So with this newfound knowledge, you go into training mode, set the training dummy to high-low mix-ups, practice fuzzy defense timing, and call it the day. And this here is what I call a rookie mistake. Wait, what? You might say. I found a good solution to the problem and practiced it. Is this not peak sweaty fighting game player behavior? Yes, you found an answer, which is awesome and definitely praiseworthy. But not quite peak sweaty. Because just like how you found an answer to Eno's high-low mix-up, there's a solution for the Eno player against fuzzy blocking. And this is where we come to the main topic of this video understanding the cycle of counters and closing the loop. This concept will aid you in becoming a better player by giving you the knowledge to stay one step ahead of your opponents. Now, in order to understand this concept, let's continue on with the Eno example. Just like how you found an answer to her high-low mix-up, there is a solution to your fuzzy blocking. If you are concentrating on blocking strikes, you are more vulnerable to getting hit by throws. So naturally, one of the next logical steps for Eno is to do an empty dash and throw. This of course cannot be fuzzy blocked. With this, you are now presented with a new problem. How do I deal with the high-low mix-up combined with the threat of a throw? Invisible reversals can beat the empty low and throw, but some characters may not have one where the risk-reward just may not be in your favor. So you think a little bit more and come up with a solution to block high, then immediately fuzzy the throw. For people who are not aware, throws in Guilty Gear Strive are generally faster than any strike. So if the Eno does an empty low, she will get thrown before her crouching kick comes out. And if she does a throw, it will be nullified. Nice! By taking that extra step to think about how the opponent can counter your counter, you now have a deeper pool of tactics at your disposal. If the opponent decides to go to the next step, you already have the knowledge to counter it. You are now one step ahead of your opponent. But wait, you shouldn't stop here. And I think you already know what I'm going to say. Just like there's a counter to the throw, Eno has a counter to the fuzzy throw defense. I bet you're starting to see a pattern here. But don't worry, this pattern won't go on forever, so stick with me. Now, one effective answer for Eno against this defense is to change the timing of the aerial attack. She can use something like Aerial Dust, which has a longer startup compared to her other attacks. This change in timing will cause the fuzzy to fail because hits will come much later than expected. In this case, the Aerial Dust will be hitting around the time the throw attempt will be made. Alright, it's your turn to counter again. What beats delayed aerial attacks? That's right, anti-airs. Since the attack is not meaty, you have time to do attacks like forward punch to counter. counter. 
and we are on our final stretch. What can Eno do to beat Waco Bantires? This one's easy, save jump attacks. You have probably noticed here, but we've come full circle and now at the starting point of this video. This is what I call closing the loop. By understanding the cycle of this offense and defense interaction, you now have a full set of strategies to stay one step ahead of your opponent. Do you think your opponent recognizes you are blocking the safe jumps? Start adding the throw. Think they are going to transition to delayed aerials? Go for the wake up anti-airs. The two key takeaways here is that one, if you search for counters of counters, you will eventually come back to the starting point. And two, labbing until you close the loop will give you a full set of strategies that can aid you in staying one step ahead of your opponent. Of course, not all strategies are single loops. There are often branching paths, but usually follow a similar pattern of what we did here. For example, instead of doing a delayed aerial attack to beat fuzzy throw defense, Eno can simply space an empty low outside of throw range. This of course can be deflected with a fuzzy high-low block. Anyways, the important thing here is to imagine yourself in your opponent's shoes and strategize accordingly. Hope that helped! Let me know in the comments if you have any special methods when researching counters. I'd love to see them. Alright, until next time, have fun with fighting games.